Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. And welcome back to an empty room. It's been a while since you guys have been in here overall. Um, but been a real long time since you've been in here been in here without anything in it. And uh, I really just wanted to get in here and I want to explain the room, the very basics of it at least, not every single detail, but I want to give you guys a general basic idea of what I'm using, what my setup is without plants so YouTube can't really uh, flag anything for any particular reason. This is just a quote unquote generic grow room at this point. So what I have here and uh, everyone asks is how big is my space? My space is about, I think it's about nine, nine feet interior space, about nine feet by seven foot seven, seven foot eight. Um, exterior space is a, was in theory supposed to be about a uh, eight by 10. Had to do a little bit of modifications to deal with some local setbacks and some, some ordinances, but no big deal there. So what I do is I run a four by eight setup in here so I can have everything completely contained in the room. It's, you know, when you grow in a tent, you grow in the tent, but then you work outside of it. This, I don't need to maximize every single square footage of space in here. So it's nice to have the four by eight in here and then a good amount of space, both walkway, storage, everything else along with it. So I run two four by four trays simply because it, at, at the time I had a smaller SUV and it was just hard to get four by eight trays in there. So I went with two four, two four by fours, but I would love to have a nice seamless uh, four by eight tray in here, but we're running two four by four trays and they're specifically their Botanicare low tide trays. I like them simply just for that. They're low tide. They don't have a high lip um, because I use this as a saucer, not a flood tray. I don't flood this by any means. I do drip all the time. And so I'm really using this as a saucer. And if, if you went out and bought nine saucers or whatever uh, to keep them clean, to keep water going, a, a, a tray is just so much better. So I run two trays um, and have everything off to the side as far as equipment to go alongside. Over those two trays, I run 640 watts potential of LED. Uh, that's actual draw at the wall. I run 640 watts per side here, but you'll know I always note my wattage that I'm running within the run. I usually don't go too hard. Um, been running a lot of times between five and 600 watts in these spaces per side. So, you know, basically 1,000 to maybe 1,100 watts over the space. I do really well, um, usually hit over two no problem and uh, this run and we'll get into some details about it we're going to try to push the yield a little bit here with some precision irrigation but uh, before we get off topic too quick these lights were uh, diy with old pacific light uh, pacific light concepts photo boost strips unfortunately no longer available to the public so these are kind of a, uh, a relic of history right now but nonetheless essentially puts out about 1700 micromoles total output at around 2.8 micromoles per joule efficacy a fairly warm um, red, white, and spectrum, and I run them for both veg and flower, but uh, the spectrum is slightly tuned towards flower for sure on that, but veg just fine, and you guys will get to see that here if you're new to the channel and haven't seen it before. So these are DIY builds, and they are powered by four Meanwhile HLG 320s, um, and I have them on a wall remote. Potentially could get these outside of the room, um, but at this point haven't really gone that step. So 600, you know, 640 watts a piece, and that's all coming in off 240 volt power. So I run 240 volt power to a light box uh, that can you know, potentially go on and off, switch your power. Um, and then these lights are actually controlled by my environmental and light controller, Trollmaster. We can talk all day on, is this a good controller? Is it a bad controller? Overall, yes, Trollmaster is pretty good. And for the money, and especially when it first came out, totally good controller. There's some hiccups, there's some keep it calibrated there's some little issues but overall it does just fine as far as triggering things like co2 uh, humidity temperature ppfd if you want but in indoors that makes no sense to me um, but also instead of actually turning the lights on and off at the 240 box they get plugged on and off via the dimming cables the driver so that's a nice little benefit here and if you're a uh, an led diy guy you probably like that and then lastly we have it wirelessly i just use this little netgear uh router ex extender kind of thing. Um, I think I use it as an access point essentially is what I'm doing and able to control the troll master from my phone via anywhere. Um, and so that controls, like I said, everything, CO2, uh, extraction fans, 
humidifier, everything to go along the line. So with that said, I am running a standard, I think, I don't even know, it's, uh, it's the biggest one they make. It's the old 70 pint uh, Ideal Air dehumidifier. And then I have it plumbed so that it just drains straight into my flood trays. Oh yeah, look at her go. Um, straight into my flood trays and then out the building. So we'll get in the irrigation, but everything drains via the flood trays before we get too far into it. Um, so that's the humidifier. And then lastly, on as far as the environmental controller aspect is the fan. It's currently not on right now, um, but I'm using an AC Infinity and I have the controller, which I kind of set at about six is kind of five to six is my fan speed I use. And it's controlled, uh, it's controlled via Trollmaster, even though it can control itself. I have it doing Trollmaster, so is that's how we're working with that. Um, so that extraction fan is up in the ceiling right there. That's actually a little blocked out cavern, so all the air gets sucked out of there and shot out the building. And that is the only. There is no, uh, there is no AC. I do not run an AC. Ideally, one day I probably put a mini split right up there. Be really nice, but uh, no AC. We just have air, air incoming through a, uh, just a standard AC filter on the other side, um, and a light baffle comes in here. Fresh air ideally gets sucked into the, uh, the dehu and spit out down the canopy, as well as two circulating fans, and I bring a uh, couple other fans in as needed here. So that is the general environment, how it's controlled. Again, all done by via Trollmaster. Um, it's what I use, and I'm not saying it's the best, it's just what I'm using. And really, there's not too much extra, except probably what you guys really want to hear on this video, and I've dragged it out to the end, is my irrigation system. And again, this is not the ultimate setup. I am not an expert on the irrigation. The irrigation is a new, it's a new thing for me on, uh, we're trying, we're trying some new stuff this run, so this is all new. So I'm showing you what I got. I'm not per se recommending it. I obviously bought it because I think it's going to succeed and it's the best stuff that I could find. So I, I, it's not a careless thought here, but like I said, I have not ran it yet. So I'm not recommending it yet. I'm just showing you what I'm using. So the essential is I run 18 plants total in the garden, nine per side. And to do that, irrigating can get a little tedious as far as building systems, keeping them up kept, and, and it's just been a pain for me. So I'm transitioning to a micro drip system here, and it's all done with uh, semi-soft, I mean, it's fairly fairly rigid line, it's poly, um, it's not bendable per se, but it's slightly, slightly moldable. And uh, off those, I'm running basic drippers. These are half gallon per hour drippers from Netafim. Um, both the 17 millimeter, this is 17 millimeter white poly line here, um, along with the drippers are from Netafim. That's the hype brand right now. That's what everyone's recommending. That's what everyone's using. So that's what we're going to go with for now. With that, we're using their tech lock twist, uh, twist connectors. So we can take things apart if we do need to. But I will say building the system with this was very easy. You essentially just punch the holes and these just pop right in. Very, very easy. And you can essentially set it up however you like and get dummy plugs if you change it down the line. Very versatile. But I have two drippers going to each container, running a half gallon per hour, or is a half gallon per hour, half, yeah, half gallon per hour, basically equates to around 30 milliliters per minute per dripper. In reality, I've measured a little less than that so far, but you figure that out once you get your system going. So that is it. Um, that is the end. I'm running it all off a 32 gallon trash can. Yeah, oh, the fan just kicked on. And it's currently being powered by a generic DC house inline pump. And this is where I'm saying that I am by no means an expert. I use the pump because I need the pressure. We'll probably be going back to a higher quality sump pump. The sump pumps I had in the past didn't live up to the last system I had, so we went to the inline. The inlines are, I've talked about it a few ways, they're a point of failure, and they are, 100%. Um, so not the perfect pump. But nonetheless, water gets sucked up out of the reservoir, pump down the line where it hits a mesh filter. I believe it's a uh, 155 mesh, nothing tight. It's got a 50 mesh on the other side, 155 here. And then the back side of this is actually a pressure regulator. So there's a 25 PSI pressure regulator in there. That's why it says 25 PSI down there. Runs down schedule 43 quarter inch PVC where it branches off to zone one um, and then continues on also to zone two. As they go to their zones, there's a solenoid and a check valve 
So we have a generic Rainbird. This is from Home Depot. This is just a generic solenoid. Um, solenoid. We have a check valve, so pressure is not going to go back. That might change. Don't think that's necessary, but nonetheless, that's what we're using. Uh, and then we go to a tech lock connector straight into some pipe. We will get some spa hose to do some flexible, you know, quote unquote whips, as the kids say these days, uh, some whip kits. Uh, we'll do the, the spa hose things just to show you guys how it's done. But right now, um, I didn't have time to go find a spot that sold that stuff by the foot versus by the hundred foot. If you buy it by the hundred feet, it's like a hundred bucks. Not a big deal. I just don't want to spend it on it right now. So um, running kind of a not whipped system just straight off. But that is what it is. So they're solenoids, check valves, and then straight to the dripper system where it tees off. And essentially every each tray has a square around it. And then off each side, I have my drippers punctured and ran off. So that's great. Um, kind of the key, and especially with this pressure system, is, is this pump is always on. Once the system is at pressure, these pumps shut off. And that's why I like them, because the key to this system isn't triggering the pump when you want to water. It's triggering the solenoids. And all of this is controlled normally by a timer or something. But this is where we stepped up and have a nice, very nice system here. And this is the GrowLink, uh, I think it's called the Precision Irrigation Controller. But uh, what it is, is essentially, mm, it's got a Wi-Fi stack in it, but it's an AI system, as well as uh, four relays that can control 24-volt AC uh, relays, um, as well as sensor inputs from sensors similar to the Taros, but they have their own made by Acoma. Um, EC does media EC, media temperature, and media water content. So with that data, this controller and the app and the AI system uh, can essentially do a automated crop steering program or you can manly, manually input your times and relays and where, however you want to do that manually um, with some safety fallbacks as well. But what I'm pretty stoked about is there, it's all in the app and it might be hard to see here, but essentially it's a crop steering program where we can enter everything we want to pretty much hit that graph as you see on the top um, from dry back. So what valve we want to open? So what sensor do we want to key off? Um, when the lights come on, so when you actually want to start your watering an hour after, two hours after, whenever it may be, uh, it's all programmed in here, as well as initial ramp up, um, desired water content, the initial ramp up shot size, the regular shot size, the maintenance shot size, um, how long it takes you. It's, it's a pretty full program and then it'll estimate it all. So I haven't quite got it fully up and running at scale yet. So I can, again, I cannot comment on it, but that is the premise of this. So based on currently only have one sensor and I'm going to be getting another, but based on this sensor's input, as this dries, say back from 50% water content to 40% water content, once it hits 40, if that's our trigger point, boom, this relay sends out a signal to whichever solenoid, because I have them, I'm going to use two sensors so that each zone, I can run two strains and they can be fed however they want to be fed, as much or as little as needed, same strength, but as much or as little as needed. Um, we'll can zone, control zone one or zone two. So once that opens, boom, that opens, and then the drippers go hot, they start to drip, and then it closes down. It's a, uh, it's a quite nice system. And uh, I don't have enough water in the in the res right now to really run it, um, but you guys will see it if you come back and watch the runs that will follow this. So that's the plan. The reason I'm doing this video so raspy and so late here, and kind of on the fly, is that uh, I need to get some plants in here. It's nice and beautiful and sterile as it is clean here, but let's get some beautiful green plants in here. Get this thing up and going. Nine plants per side here, 18 total on here. Good lighting, great irrigation. Uh, I'll probably get CO2 going in veg as well. Uh, 10 day veg, man. That's I'm hoping 10 to 14 day veg, and then just blow it up from there and uh, see how things do. So that is the room in a nutshell. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten things. Obviously, I've got a little tool tool shelf here and a few other things and a work light uh, if need be and a couple, you know. There's little details here that I have missed, like such as my green jeans garden sign in the back has broken. The green jeans part broke. I'm super bummed about that. Anyway, there are little things in here that I forget hanging my sleeves on the, you know, you get it. So tell me what I forgot, what else you want to hear. But overall, this is really going to give you guys 
the the general gist of what is in my grow room what do i have what do i you know what is here security camera there you go um what's here so anyway thanks for stopping by checking it out uh dropping comments giving likes i appreciate it all i appreciate the positive the positive feedback the positive support and again i'm by no means an expert so if you know something Go ahead and throw it down, but just let's let's be respectful. No one has to know everything here. Let's let's both be nice about everything here, and uh, help me help you, kind of thing. So again, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you guys very soon. Next time, peace. peace.